ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, إن شاء الله this is the fourth and, uh, and the last story in سورة الكهف and today إن شاء الله we want to talk about ذي القرنين ذي القرنين uh, before we start with the story uh, remember in the first lesson when we said that uh, a, a group of Quraysh went to the people of the book the people of the scripture to ask them about question, uh, questions that they can examine and test Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to see and to learn he, to see and to know whether he is a prophet or not whether he is said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not and uh, the first question about the group of young men who disappeared in the ages and that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu the second question was about Zil Qarnayn which is a king who owned the east and the west so the meaning he owned the earth uh, and the third one about the ruh, the soul, the spirit and we already covered those now this is the second one where the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this great king. Now there are four kings who really owned the whole world. They were able to control the whole world. Um, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam, Zil Qarnayn, uh, Iskandar al-Maqduni which is Alexander the Great and Nabuchad Nasr. Nabuchad Nasr. Now here my brothers and sisters in Islam uh, 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 ulama are different whether Zil Qarnayn is a prophet or just a king so on and so forth in reality that has not much to do with us um, we don't read to be because we, there is no clear proof uh, which way yes whether he was a king or prophet or just a righteous king which is uh, more likely yani the ulama said and ulama of tafsir that he is a righteous king Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said here وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا And they ask you about ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ Say, I shall recite to you something of his story. Now here, my brothers and sisters in Islam, what does ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ mean? Some ulama said, يعني علماء of tafsir, they said, that he owned the two qarns, that means the east and the west and whatever is between them. So to the meaning, that's why they call him ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ because the east is a Qarn and the West is a Qarn that means he owned everything and some ulama said no he used to wear a helmet which has had horns on it uh, and, and, and this is the ulama sort of different in this and also this is يعني, not much that we need to know but just as a general idea Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the people of the, the people of Quraysh and the people of scripture they're asking you about this the Qarnayn I will inform you, I will tell you about the Qarnayn. Subhanallah. The best source of knowledge is when it comes from the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know it is pure, it is clean, it is clear, it is like a pure water that comes down your throat when you are thirsty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّا مَكَّنَّا لَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا Verily we established him in the earth and we gave him the means of everything. Subhanallah al-Azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مَكَّنَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ يعني He gave him all the means of power. The means of power, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is the, the, the military power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a strong army. Also, al quwa al ilmiya a knowledge, the, the power of knowledge, science and knowledge. He had the power, as the story will show, will show, will show us, that he had a lot of knowledge in science and other things. And uh, 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 gave him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, ta'ala gave him the wealth, the money. So all the means, all the tools of power, they were available to this righteous king. So what did he do? Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said فَأَتْبَعَ سَبَبَ So he followed the way. Yes, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him all these different elements for him to establish himself on this earth. So what he said, he said, no, now I am going to sit at home, put my feet up 
and get married to four wives and do all the lovely things in life and not do anything? No. So he followed away. He was not lazy, a bludger, a, 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 a person who is, uh, 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 a person who, who didn't do anything. No. On the contrary, he was a person with high spirit who said, no, I am not going to sit here even though I own everything. I want to take my army and go from a country to a country and spread righteousness and spread the da'wah and spread monotheism, tawheed. Subhanallah al-Azim, he did not stay back. Allah gave him the means. And there is a lesson here for us, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that subhanallah, this Surah al-Kahf, if it, it talks to anyone, it talks to the youth of this ummah. If it is directed to anyone, directed to the youth of this ummah. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially here in the West, yes, what Allah gave you all the means. Yeah, and life is easy, it's not as hard as the one who live in the Middle East and, and Bangladesh and other countries. Gave you all these means and we still prefer to sit back, do nothing, uh, study not, um, nor do da'wah, nor do anything. Subhanallah. Allah gave this king everything that he needed and he employed it, subjected it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْتَى وَالتَّقَى As for him who gives in charity and keeps his duty to Allah and fears him, وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى And believe in al-husna, in righteousness, in Islam, in, in tawheed, فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We will make a smooth for him a path of ease and goodness. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, when you take the first steps forward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take and will open the doors for you. So all that you need, all that you need, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that for you to take the step, yes, for you to take the step and you will see how easy it is after this. The first few steps in everything that you do are hard, yes, but after you overcome them, everything, subhanallah al-azim, becomes easy. I can tell you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, just a little bit to elaborate, to enforce and instill this point. I came to this country, I could not even speak English to Australia. Not even one word. Just 12, 13 years ago, I could not speak English. At all. Yes? And then I learned the language. In the beginning, I found it hard. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the doors. As long as your intention are right and sincere, Allah will open doors for you from where you never expected for you. This righteous king, that's exactly what he done. Allah gave him all the power, all the means, all the needs. فَأَتْبَعَ سَبَبًا Then he followed away. He took whatever he's got and he went forward. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةً وَوَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا قَوْمًا قُلْنَا يَا ذَا الْقَرْنَيْنِ إِمَّا أَن تُعَذِّبَ وَإِمَّا أَن تَتَّخِذَ فِيهِمْ حُسْنًا See here, until when he reached the setting place of the sun. Say, he now traveled towards the west. Yes, he traveled towards the west. As long as he can go, as far as he can go. Here he said, وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةً He's seen it that it is, it is setting, he found it setting in spring black muddy or hot water. Yes, here to the meaning, some people would miss, will, miss, will misunderstand this verse. Yani some people would say, how can the Quran says that the sun um, uh, sits in, 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 in the muddy waters? Yani as if it goes in. No, no. The Quran is accurate. The people who are yani, trying to criticize the Quran, they're the ones who do not understand the Arabic language. The Quran is more accurate than anything in this world. Listen to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَدَهَا To the meaning that ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ He saw the sun setting. Yani to the meaning, if you are standing on the beach and you're looking, uh, or, uh, uh, and you're looking towards the west, or even if you're standing uh, in a desert where uh, uh, yani your vision is endless towards the, uh, towards the west, you see the sun setting in the sand. And if you are standing on the beach, you will see the sun setting in the water. And when you are very young, very young and, and, and a baby, when you look at the sun setting in the water, and you see, you think it is taking a dip in the water. 
in reality it is not. But this is how, this is how you see it standing from far away. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that the sun sets in the muddy water. No. He said, wajadaha. He seen it. He seen it. It is Dhul Qarnayn. According to his, to him, he is the one who's seeing the sun setting in this muddy water. وَوَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا قَوْمًا And he found some group of people there. Uh, 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 قَالَ يَعْنِ قُلْنَا يَا ذَا الْقَرْنَيْنِ إِمَّا أَنْ تُعَذِّبْ um, we, uh, يعني, we hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him by inspiration, أَذُ الْقَرْنَيْنِ Either you punish them or treat them with kindness. Yes? Then here, listen to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he told him, either you punish them, or, uh, or you treat them with kindness. Of course, not with his power he entered and demolished the whole town. No. First, da'ahum ila al-Islam. Yes? Da'ahum ila al-Islam. He called them to Islam. He said, he found these people, they didn't have any civilization, they had nothing. He said, come and learn. Yes? And learn what I have. And learn from me. Yes? And he taught them what they need to know. And he said to them that this is the righteous path, so follow it. Whomever does good, yes, we will reward him and we will look after him. And whomever does evil, we would punish them. And this is the characteristics of a just king. Not punishing everyone, not collectively punishing people as some countries do. They punish the whole people for just a few. No. He, he, he said here, and the verse that comes afterwards said exactly, قَالَ أَمَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ فَسَوْفَ نُعَذِّبُهُ ثُمَّ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا نُكْرًا He said, as for him, a disbeliever in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does wrong, we should punish him. And then he will be brought back un- unto his Lord who will punish him with a terrible torment. Hell wal billah. So here, he said, whoever does anything evil, I will punish him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him. As for the one, وَأَمَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُ جَزَاءً حُسْنًا وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا يُسْرًا Here he said, but as for him who believe in Allah's oneness and works righteousness, we shall have the best reward paradise, and we, the Qarnayn, يعني here, shall speak unto him, mild words as uh, yani, uh, instructions and we will help him. This is the characteristics of a merciful da'i to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, described the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim. He's kind and merciful towards the believers. So, he has al Qadan, he says, whoever wants to follow me, I'll be kind, I'll be merciful, I'll make things easy for them. And this is a lesson for us, my brothers and sisters in Islam, how to be kind and merciful towards our brothers and sisters in Islam. That not to mistreat each other or mistreat our brothers and uh, sisters in Islam. And especially when we do the da'wah, we have to do the da'wah with kindness and softness and ease to the people not being hard and uh, 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 being, uh, uh, being uh, harsh towards others. After he was done from the west, did he just build the castle and sleep? Or he, still, he stole the wealth of the people and poured it into his country? No, he did not, he did not do that. Indeed, he just gave them the, the righteousness, he taught them to be righteous, and then, thumma, and then followed another way. Subhanallah al-Azim. He entered that country to teach him the righteousness, to give him a better methodology of life. He did not steal their gold, nor their diamonds, nor their um, wealth, nor their oil, nothing. He just entered, taught them righteousness, and left. Compare him to the modern kings of today. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترا until when he came to the rising place of the sun 
So he travelled all the way from the west. As long as his eyes can go, as long as the distance will take him, as long as the land will take him, yes, all the way to the other side in the east. Yani subhanallah al azim Of course, in this journey, he must have passed so many cities, so many places that he would give da'wah to. Yes, he's talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about the two edges, the two extremes, the, the extreme west and the extreme east. He, he found the sun rising uh, 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 rising on a people for whom we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يعني, have provided no shelter, yes, against the sun. This is another يعني, group of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a strange tribe, yes, a strange tribe where they would not understand anything, yes. They have no, uh, uh, يعني, uh, uh, they have, sorry, they have um, nothing to shelter them between and the sun. So they live out in the, in the open. The ulama said here, the ulama are into two opinions. Some ulama, they said actually they never used to dress anything. Yes, they had houses, but they never used to wear. They were totally naked uh, uh, and just about covering the private parts, but everything else was naked and they used to roam around the bushes. Or, or they said that they never had uh, houses at all. Yes, they would live just in the out in the open. Allahu a'lam, yani, what is the best opinion? Then he gave him, Allah subhanahu, he, he gave them da'wah to these people and he taught them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, كَذَلِكَ وَقَدْ أَحَطَنَا بِمَا لَدَيْهِ خُبْرًا So it was, and we, we knew all about Dhul Qarnayn. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knew about him, he knew about what he's done, and he knew what this man is doing. ثُمَّ أَتْبَعَ سَبَبَ Even after this, the Qarnayn never settled, nor um, uh, 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 set anywhere, nor he stayed. He continued for the sake of Allah the Da'wah. See, a rich king, subhanallah al azim where he could be resting inside his palace, traveling from east to west, meeting people and giving them da'wah, people who they never ever seen civilization, nor they know anything. This is the, the ham, the, the, the ham, the worry inside his heart to spread tawheed and to spread monotheism and to spread Islam. It is inside his heart. He would never sleep. He would, he rather travel on his horse from a place to a place and not stay home in his comfortable council. And this is how the believer, the mu'min, the Muslim supposed to be. Wherever he travels, whether he's in the UK, or in America, or in Australia, or in Lebanon, or Afghanistan, or Pakistan, or any country, the worry of the da'wah should be with him. While you were eating, yes, in your plate, you're supposed to be thinking about how, how, I, am, how I am going to save the people from Jahannam, how I, I am going to save myself and my family from Jahannam, wal'iyadu billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ بَيْنَ السَّدَّيْنِ وَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمَا قَوْمًا لَا يَعْكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ قَوْلًا Until when he reached between the two mountains, he found before near them those two mountains, and near those two mountains, a people who um, uh, uh, did not understood, yes, they are illiterate and they hardly understood a word, yes, here he found them, yes, he found them that they had nothing, they knew nothing, and they had no knowledge of Allah then said, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ بَيْنَ السَّدَّيْنِ وَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمَا قَوْمًا لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ قَوْلًا Until when he reached the, uh, between the two mountains, he found before, يعني, near them, those two mountains, a people who hardly understood a word. He found them very poor needy, they don't understand anything. Now, here he, the ulama said he used an interpreter to speak to them, someone to speak to them, and to see uh, what, uh, 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 what's the problem with them. See, as you will see, he put a plan for them. He put a plan for them. Yes, he helped them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what he has done, he said to them, يعني they said to him, uh, to him uh, they said to him, قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فهل نجعل لك 
خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا They said أذو قمين Verily يأجوج and مأجوج Gog and Magog Are doing a great mischief in the land Shall we then pay you a tribute In order that you might erect a barrier between us and them Now listen to what he said And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is teaching us a methodology يعني when we are ruling, how should we deal with people? Should we use their resources and say to them, yes, we will protect you, we will provide all the protection for you in any country would attack you or any group of people would attack you and then we just leave them? No. Here he put, يعني ذو قرنين, he put for them a plan. As you will see, the verses would come to tell us that he put for them a plan. Yes? As we have, we know this story that um, uh, uh, don't give someone a fish, teach them how to fish. Because if you would give them a fish, every day they would come back, they want a fish from you. Yes? But if you teach them how to fish, they can feed themselves. Yes? And this is, this is the, 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 the justice, this is the justice. Not take the wealth of the nations, put them in your pocket and say, okay, we will build a base in your country, anyone would attack you then, we will attack them back. No, teach them how to be able to protect themselves, yes? But, subhanAllah, um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us if we were to be kings, if we were to, be, to rule the world, how do we, how do we help uh, 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 the people? He said, Atuni zubar al-hadith. See, he said to them, bring, you go work, you go work, give me pieces, blocks of iron, you go work, learn how to work, and learn how to do things by yourself, yes? He did not order the army and take the money and pocket it in his pocket. No. He said, you go get the, the pieces of iron. حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين Now, uh, uh, then when he had filled between, uh, the gap between uh, the two mountain cliffs, see, now he uses his expertise. He is the one who filled it, stacked it, because they did not know how to stack it. He showed them how he stacked the iron on top of each other. He said to them, also he let them work, let them learn by themselves. قال انفخوا حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا. He said to them, blow. Then when he had made them red as fire, he said, bring me molten, uh, molten copper to pour over it. See, after he put the metal, then he melted copper over it. And the ulama, the ulama of um, uh, uh, this type of um, uh, science, they say the thickest, the thickest and the most strongest type of iron metal is the iron that is covered with melted copper. Subhanallah al -Azim. So it is the strongest of iron and metal that you can get your hand on. And it is, um, uh, this is what he done, subhanallah al -Azim. He said to them, this is the plan. This is how we're going to do it. You people, go, get, go out and get the, the iron. You people, blow the fire. You people, help me to pour the iron. And he used his expertise to show them how to do it. Yes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, فَمَسْطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوا وَمَسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they, so they, Juj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, were made powerless to, sc uh, 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 to scale it. Yani they could not go over it or dig through it. This is Subhanallah al Azim. And let us just stop for a minute to talk about Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Hagar and Magog. Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once, yani in the authentic hadith, he was. Uh, 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 يعني, uh, with Zainab bin Jahsh radiallahu anha that um, he came to her very scared and he said يعني, لا إله إلا الله ويل للعرب من شر قد اقترب لا إله إلا الله ويل to the Arabs from an evil that just coming very close فتح اليوم من ردم يأجوج ومأجوج مثل هذه um, today from the, 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 this barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, it's been opened just like this. And then, وَحَلَّقَ بِإِصْبَعِهِ الْإِبْهَامِ وَالَّتِي تَلِيهَا And he made a circle between his thumb and the other finger, يعني small circle, this is how much. 
Yes. So Zainab radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, afanahlaku wa fina salihun. Do we get the malice, O Messenger of Allah, destroyed and there is righteous, righteous people among, amongst us? He said, Naam, iza kathur al khadat. Yes, when filth is widespread and filth is multiplied and increased. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, just being us being righteous and the whole world is in filth, then that means the destruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming near. Sometimes we have here, for example, close to us in Indonesia, the tsunami, if you heard, of, heard about it, where it destroyed towns and towns and towns. And amongst these people there was a lot of Muslims. But one would say, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send such a torment? We have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would destroy the towns, even if there is righteous people amongst them. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Then here he said, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, about Dhul uh, Qarnayn, he said, قال هذا رحمة من ربي لا إله إلا الله. Dhul Qarnayn said, this is a mercy from my Lord. Yani all what you see from my power, all what you see from my knowledge, all what you see, this is a blessing and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not stop in prayer and pride and say, look at me, look how powerful I am, look at my army, look how I built you this beautiful barrier. I am and I am and I am and I do and I do. No, because this is not the case of a righteous person, yes? Not the case of a righteous person. The righteous person always would say, this is a mercy from my Lord. Yes. Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam with all the powers he's been given. Yes. He said the similar thing that this is a mercy from my Lord. This is from the mercy and, and, and the blessing from my Lord. Yes. So he did not yani pride did not overtake him. Indeed he said that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me as a mercy to give to the rest of the world. And this is how the righteous person should be. And then he said, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءَ وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حَقَّ He should, يعني, when, but when the promise of my Lord comes, he should level it down to the ground, and the promise of my Lord is ever true. So towards the judgment day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would demolish this barrier, and George, George would open and come out as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them حتى إذا فتحت يأجوج ومأجوج وهم من كل وهم من كل حدر ينسلون and uh, uh, when let loose from the barrier and they will swiftly swarm from every mound so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said when the barrier is open in Surah Al-Anbiya, yani, the barrier is open, then Ya'juj and Ma'juj would come out, and from everywhere, uh, 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 every place they would come out. As Allah, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about them, that Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, he'll be alive then, back on this earth, and he'll be told to take the righteous people and his followers up to the top of the mountain, because there is some slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come out and no one is able to fight them back to fight them back and they are so big in numbers that the first one as in the hadith collected in Sahih Muslim the first one uh, or the first lot of them will pass by the dam of Tabaria which is in Palestine now they would drink what is in it and the last one would come past and he would look at it and he would say one day in long time ago there was water here. Subhanallah, they would drink a whole big, huge dam. Yes, Subhanallah al -Azim. And that's how big they are in number. Always we need to remember that a lot of these descriptions that people have and the fairy tales and where they are now, Allahu A'lam, Allahu A'lam about them, where they are. Yani some people would say we filmed already uh, through the... the, the through the satellite, the whole world, and we can't see any group of people. Everything has been discovered. We say we are as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, it is part of our Aqidah, our creed to believe in Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and they are somewhere uh, uh, hidden, Allahu A'lam, where they are, and we just stop at this. Yes? 
We just stop at this. How many things in this earth we haven't discovered yet and we do not know about it yet? Not even we have discovered the earth fully nor the sea fully, so we cannot tell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, about Ya'juj and Ma'juj, وَتَرَكْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْضٍ On that day, i.e. the day Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Hagog and Magog will come out, yes, uh, 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 we shall leave them to surge like waves on one another, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا And the trumpet will be blown, and we should collect them, the creatures, all together. Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blows the horn and on the day of judgment, the pieces of iron. حَتَّى إِذَا سَاوَى بَيْنَ الصَّدَفَيْنِ Now, uh, uh, then when he had filled between, uh, the gap between uh, the two mountain cliffs, see, now he uses his expertise. He is the one who filled it, stacked it, because they did not know how to stack it. He showed them how he stacked the iron on top of each other. He said to them, also he let them work, let them learn by themselves. قَالَ انْفُخُوا حَتَّى إِذَا جَعَلَهُ نَارًا قَالَ آتُونِ أُفْرِغْ عَلَيْهِ قِطَرًا He said to them, blow. Then when he had made them red as fire, he said, bring me molten, uh, molten copper to pour over it. See? After he put the metal, then he melted copper over it. And the ulama, the ulama of um, uh, uh, this type of um, uh, science, they say the thickest, the thickest and the most strongest type of iron metal is the iron that is covered with melted copper. Subhanallah al -Azim. So it is the strongest of iron and metal that you can get your hand on. And it is um, uh, this is what he'd done, subhanallah al -Azim. He said to them, this is the plan, this is how we're going to do it. You people, go, get, go out and get the, the iron. You people, blow the fire. You people, help me to pour the iron. And he used his expertise to show them how to do it. Yes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, فَمَا اسْطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوا وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they, so they, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Gog and Magog, were made powerless to, sca uh, 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 to scale it. Yani they could not go over it or dig through it. This is Subhanallah al -Azim, And let us just stop for a minute to talk about Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Hagar and Magog. Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once, yani in the authentic hadith, he was uh, 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 yani, uh, with Zainab bin Jahsh radiyallahu anha that um, he came to her very scared and he said yani, La ilaha illallah waylun lil arab min sharri qad iqtarab La ilaha illallah woe to the Arabs from an evil that just came very close Futiha al-yawmu min radmi ya'juja wa ma'juj mithla hadihi um, Today from the, 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 this barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, it's been opened just like this. And then, وَحَلَّقَ بِإِصْبَعِهِ الْإِبْهَامُ وَالَّتِي تَلِيهَا And he made a circle between his thumb and the other finger, يعني small circle, this is how much. Yes. So Zainab, رضي الله عنها, she said, Ya Rasulullah, أَفَنَهْلَكُ وَفِينَ الصَّالِحُونَ do we get demolished, O Messenger of Allah, destroyed, and there is righteous, righteous people among, amongst us? He said, Naam, is a kathur al khadat. Yes, when filth is widespread, and filth is multiplied and increased. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, just being us being righteous, and the whole world is in filth, then that means the destruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming near. Sometimes, we had here, for example, close to us in Indonesia, the tsunami, if you heard, of, heard about it, where it destroyed towns and towns and towns. And amongst these people, there was a lot of Muslims. But one would say, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send such a torment? We have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would destroy the towns, even if there is righteous people amongst them. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Then here he said, يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى said uh, about uh, ذو القرنين he said قال هذا رحمة من ربي لا إله إلا الله 
Zulkarnayn said, this is a mercy from my Lord. Yani, all what you see from my power, all what you see from my knowledge, all what you see, this is a blessing and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not stop in prayer and pride and say, look at me, look how powerful I am. Look at my army. Look how I built you this beautiful barrier. I am and I am and I am and I do and I do. No, because this is not the case of a righteous person, yes? Not the case of a righteous person. The righteous person always would say, this is a mercy from my Lord, yes? Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam with all the powers he's been given. Yes, he said the similar thing, that this is a mercy from my Lord. This is from the mercy and, and, and the blessing from my Lord. Yes, so he did not, yani pride did not overtake him. Indeed, he said that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me as a mercy to give to the rest of the world. And this is how the righteous person should be. And then he said, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّاءَ وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حَقَّا He should, يعني, when, but when the promise of my Lord comes, he should level it down to the ground, and the promise of my Lord is ever true. So toward the judgment day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will demolish this barrier, and George, George would open and come out as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them حتى إذا فتحت يأجوج ومأجوج وهم من كل وهم من كل حدر ينسلون and uh, uh, when let loose from the barrier and they will swiftly swarm from every mound so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said when the barrier is open in Surah Al-Anbiya, yani, the barrier is open, then Ya'juj or Ma'juj would come out, and from everywhere, uh, 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 every place they would come out. As Allah, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about them, that Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, he'll be alive then, back on this earth, and he'll be told to take the righteous people and his followers up to the top of the mountain, because there is some slaves of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would come out, and no one is able to fight them back, to fight them back. And they are so big in numbers that the first one, as in the hadith collected in Sahih Muslim, the first one, uh, or the first lot of them will pass by the dam of Tabariya, which is in Palestine now. They would drink what is in it, and the last one would come past, and he would look at it, and he would say, One day, in long time ago, there was water here. Subhanallah, they would drink a whole big, huge dam. Yes, Subhanallah al azim and that's how big they are in number. Always we need to remember that a lot of these descriptions that people have and the fairy tales and where they are now, Allahu A'lam, Allahu A'lam about them, where they are. Yani some people would say we filmed already uh, through the... the, the through the satellite, the whole world, and we can't see any group of people. Everything has been discovered. We say we are as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, it is part of our aqidah, our creed to believe in Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and they are somewhere uh, uh, hidden, Allahu A'lam, where they are, and we just stop at this. Yes? We just stop at this. How many things in this earth we haven't discovered yet, and we do not know about it yet? Not even we have discovered the earth fully, nor the sea fully, so we cannot tell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, about يأجوج ومأجوج وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض. On that day, i.e. the day يأجوج ومأجوج, Hagog and Magog will come out, yes, uh, 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 we shall leave them to surge like waves on one another, وَنُفِقَ فِي الصُّورِ فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا And the trumpet will be blown and we should collect them, the creatures, all together. Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blows the horn and on the day of judgment, everyone would be collected.